What's going on everybody, C4 here, and today we're continuing with our 32 team 7 round mock draft. That was the 26th of March, this is the team that holds the 25th pick in the first round of the NFL draft, and that is the Tennessee Titans. Now the Titans actually, credit to them over the last couple of years, uh, haven't had a whole lot of like immediate needs. Now usually in most mock drafts, we consider needs, but tend to go best player available. And it's kind of tough when you do the Titans because they haven't really had glaring holes. Sure, they have areas that can add more competition, but it feels like the last two mock drafts or so hasn't been, you know, a dramatic, maybe last year wide receiver, and they, they kind of reached, but not really if they thought he was the best wide receiver in the class and got Corey Davis high. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this draft class just trying to add depth pretty much and add some competition and kind of forward think but before we jump into the mock draft we need to look at what they did via free agency with new head coach Mike Vrabel and see how that sets up our draft board so you can already see the Patriot influence on this team I uh, will start off by what they lost they decided to move on from DeMarco Murray and go with Derrick Henry as their lead back I think that's an incredibly smart decision uh, they cut to Noah Searcy who was kind of a depth guy and had a decent cap hit and they moved on from Avery Williamson which I kind of thought you know looking at their cap scenario I don't know how close it was but I think Avery Williamson's the kind of guy you should have tried to keep. He's a perfect fit for a 3-4 defense. And I'm not really sure why Mike Vrabel didn't push harder. You know, his contract by the Jets wasn't ridiculous. I think they could have matched it. Um, I don't know. Maybe Titan fans let me know. Why did they get rid of Avery Williamson? Because it seems like they could have afforded him. Uh, but look like they brought in. They're able to retain Ryan Suckup. They gave him a pretty hefty kicker contract. Uh, Resigning Daquan Jones, who's a pretty good defensive lineman. Uh, Josh Klein, who's a starting guard. They brought in Deion Lewis from the Patriots, which is an excellent complement to what they have in Derrick Henry. That is definitely going to be one of the better uh, one-two punches in the league in terms of complementing each other. You know, they're very, very polite. They call those guys Canadian because they're complementing each other a lot. And then they got Malcolm Butler, which is going to be maybe the biggest boom or bust free agency signing because they gave him a big old contract. And, you know, he didn't play in the Super Bowl. And he didn't really have that good of a year last year. So you look at... You know, Malcolm Butler is one of the more polarizing people because not only does it come from the Patriots secondary, which is, are these guys still good out of Bill Belichick's scheme, which you saw with Logan Ryan. Might not have been as good as he was with the Patriots, but certainly uh, fit in well with Tennessee. It wasn't like, you know, say, for example, Patrick Chung, when he went from the Patriots to my Eagles, was pretty much the worst safety in the NFL, and now he's serviceable to good once again. Uh, but I think we definitely, the jury's out on Malcolm Butler, and I can't say that's a home run pick yet. Uh, just because there's a little bit of um, you know, uncertainty. So with that being said, let's jump into the mock draft. So at pick 25, I was selecting edge rusher Harold Landry from Boston College. Uh, looking at their team right now, for me personally, this is kind of where you know I get a lot of Titan fans to agree with me. Uh, Derek Morgan is not good enough. I, I just feel like, you know, first round pick in 2010, what has he done in reality? He's just been solid. You know, you definitely can get a bigger upgrade there. Buying a Rackpo. Very old. Kevin Dodd, not really panning out thus far for being a second round pick in 2016. So when you're sitting here at 25 with no really immediate needs, I really do think going Harold Landry at 25, it's a little bit of a value pick. Uh, in terms of you know pure talent, he's probably in the 20, I would say in the 10 to 20 range. And the fact that he's still sitting there at 25 and you want to get, just in general, I'm not so much throwing shade on Derek Morgan and Rackpo because they're not bad. There's worse as rushers in the league. Throwing Jarrell Casey there as well. Um, but they just need to get after the quarterback more. Their sacks totals were not nearly as high as they should be considering they were a playoff team. And a guy like Harold Landry, who's pretty much a pass-rushing specialist pure, kind of think of how Vic Beasley came to the Falcons. Um, I, I think it's a good fit. And long-term, it's a good pick. Going to the second round, pick 57. I've been taking what is regarded as the best nose tackle, pure nose tackle, because uh, Vita Vea is kind of you know a hybrid of the two. Uh, and I have them selecting defensive tackle Tim Settle from Virginia Tech. A little bit of a younger prospect, so he has the age bonus, which is what a lot of teams value nowadays, rightfully so. A um, little bit of a project, not a complete player, probably should have. You know, here I say going in the second round. Probably should have went back to Virginia Tech for another year, um, just because he looks like he could get just that much more stronger. But I guess, you know, kind of get that uh, supplement shot from Mexico up the butt and get into an NFL strength and conditioning program should be fine. Uh, but he, yeah, right now he's regarded as you know one of the best, if not the best, nose tackle in this year's draft class. And you look at the Tennessee Titans, currently at nose tackle, they have Antoine Woods. You can do much better than that at the nose tackle spot. I think a guy like Tim Settle that a lot of people, personally, you know, his it's hard to really judge a nose tackle that's a pure nose tackle because 
Most times they just eat space and play against the run. And, you know, not a lot of flashy plays jump off the screen. But again, he's one of those guys that you don't hear his name called a lot. And when you're a nose tackle, that's good. That means you're doing your job. That means teams are busting big runs up the middle. And because a lot of scouts in the scouting community think he has really, really high upside, I think in the second round, it's a great pick here for the Tennessee Titans and Mike Vrabel's defense. I'm pretty sure NFL.com compared him to Vince Wolfork. There you go. Another Patriot tie. Don't think I'd go that far, though. Uh, going to the third round, pick 89, I was selecting wide receiver Simi Cobbs Jr. from Indiana. Looking at the roster, he's going to be wide receiver four. But ultimately, when I'm looking at the Tennessee Titans, it seems like Tajay Sharp um, you know, had some off-the-field issues. I think someone said he, like, he was fighting some. I don't know. Someone was explaining to me on Twitter because I was trying to get Titans needs because you know it's tough. I wanted to hear right from the fans. They said wide receiver. And I was like, well, really? And I guess Tajay Sharp's kind of on the outs there. And when you look at the salary contracts, you know, Mariota's going to probably get decent money. And when you look at what could possibly go on the offense, if Corey Davis is believed to be your guy, you got Taewon Taylor in the slot, good speedster. Richard Matthews could be on the chopping block come next offseason. And Simi Cobbs is one of my favorite wide receivers in this year's draft class. He's pretty much a mini Mike Evans, not in the same category, not in the same territory really as Mike Evans because Mike Evans is one of the best college wide receivers I've seen. But Simi Cobbs brings that same jump ball ability. And when you look at what they have here, Corey Davis is kind of the jack of all trades. He does have the jump ball, but he's also has the speed. He's also a guy that can go downfield. And Taewon Taylor's more of a slot guy. He was a third-round pick last year. So vest another one here and get just straight up your big-time red zone threat. And I think that would be Simi Cobbs. Because, you know, right now when you look at the red zone threats, you know, who does he have? Delaney Walker? I mean, you know, borrowed time. Delaney Walker, I would say, you know, every year is kind of like that. But maybe this will be the last year. And then when that's gone, who is his go-to red zone threat? Get a guy like Simi Cobbs involved in the offense right now. Save a couple bucks next offseason by moving on from Rashard Matthews so he can pay you quarterback. And I think it's a nice little fit here for the Titans offense. Going to the fourth round, pick 125. We're going best player available, and we're going safety to Sean Elliott from Texas. Had really, really good production last year for Texas. One of the better safeties from a stat sheet perspective. The tape was um, inconsistent, but when you see his good games, you could see a future starter in the NFL at safety. Uh, looking at the roster, I think he probably fit in nice behind Kevin Byard, who was a you know all pro. Um, but ultimately, I think Elliott brings the versatility. Really, there's not a massive difference between a free and strong uh, today in today's NFL, ultimately, just because teams seem to be more and more getting away from the in-the-box safety, and now they have the money-backer rule that's kind of evolving. So when the team's from the nickel, they kind of have you know three safeties on the field. And I think, like, ultimately, Kevin Baird, Deshaun Elliott, he pans out, and if you want to keep Jonathan Cyprian in that money-backer, where Cyprian is definitely one of the better safeties tackling against the run, you know, a little bit of a dying art, um... That's a good fit. So I just feel like adding another legitimate cover safety depth there too. Because if Baird went down, who you know, Brandon Trawick, is he gonna take over? Like there's there's not a whole lot of depth there at the safety spot, so I think Elliott can very much fill that role. Uh, then again, to be honest with you, this might be the dumbest thing I've ever said. I don't know a whole lot of three four teams um that have like I think the the only team that the only two teams that really jump off the paper for me is uh, the Rams and the Cardinals that really like to utilize that that fast undersized money backer type role. Um but then again, those guys are classified as linebackers, like the Dion Buchanan and Mark Barrett. They don't just have, like, the specialty safety hybrid. All right, now, to carry on. Just a little brain fart. Just talk to myself here. Uh, moving on to the fifth round, pick 162. I right, was selecting tight end Chris Herndon from Miami. Tight end three, just planning for life beyond Delaney Walker. Now, I see a lot of mock drafts have the Titans taking a tight end high, but they're kind of, it, seems, it feels like they're just making John Smith, who was a third-round pick in 2017, an afterthought. Uh, John Smith is a very, very nice tight end prospect gut. I would imagine, you know, I'm not in the locker room, but I imagine he probably picked up a thing or two from Delaney Walker last year, and I do believe he's kind of being groomed to be that guy that takes over for Delaney, but after that, I don't think Superna or Stalker, both those guys are more so, you know, guys get involved in the run blocking and stuff like that. Like beyond Delaney Walker, I mean, Titans utilize two tight ends, as many tight ends, as pretty much any offense in football. I think a guy like Chris Herndon, who's another receiving threat, uh, would be a guy that could be and fill that role. If John Smith takes over Delaney Walker, who's going to take that John Smith role? I think a guy like Herndon and Smith is a very nice tight end tandem for the Tennessee Titans going forward. Really good receiving threat. Underrated as well. Uh, moving on to the sixth round pick, 199. I was taking defensive lineman because he could pretty much play everywhere. Hercules Mata'afa from Washington State. Uh, he's pretty much the most polarizing D-tackle prospect because that's where he played because he's 250 pounds. Where are you going to fit him? He was unbelievably productive, had a boatload of tackle for losses. On a defense that, let's be honest, Washington State, not known for their defense. They're known for Mike Leach and that crazy offense. But Mondafa is definitely a polarizing prospect. I thought he might test a little bit better than what he did at the Combine. Um, but, you know, he is more so the technician type, the relentless technician type, than the freak athlete. But I, I think he finds a way onto this roster. I don't know 
If they're going to view him as an outside linebacker, you kind of want to play him in a Kevin Dodd role, or do you find him on the defensive line? Because that's where his technique, that's where his hand fighting and stuff like that can really shine through. Either way, he could be top depth behind Jarrell Casey, he could be top depth behind or challenge with Daquan Jones and Austin Johnson, who was a 2016 second round pick. But I think in terms of just depth on that defensive line, a guy like Her Hercules Mata'afa certainly would fit in there with the Tennessee Titans and definitely cracked the final 53. And then finishing up the draft, in the 7th round, pick 243, I have them taking offensive guard Jacob Alsdeck from Arizona. Don't know a whole lot about him, not going to lie, was looking to try to add another offensive lineman here. Currently projected at NFL.com to go round 6 to 7, he's a 4-year starter, great power guard, uh, zone heavy, good, you know, he's, he's a good scheme fit for the Tennessee Titans. So that's more so, guard, we're sitting around below, he's a fit. There you go. Don't know a whole lot about it, to be completely honest with you, but when you look at the Tennessee Titans, uh, the depth at guard behind Josh Klein and Quentin Spain, uh, not spectacular. They got a rebuild superstar from the Bucks, Kevin Pedophile, via free agency. Outside of that, they kind of lack some depth there. So I think a guy like Alzdeck, who might be a better fit than some of these other players, might have a chance to fall on the 53, if not the practice squad. So there you go, guys. That is your Tennessee Titans mock draft for the 2018 draft. If you agree or disagree with any of the picks here, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. If you have your own Titans mock draft, shoot it in. We'll do a nice little side-by-side. -side. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's E4 saying peace out.